In an era of ever-increasing brainwashing, when people like me need to recycle their content for views, what better opportunity to learn a little differential calculus? This is my early Christmas gift to you, my viewers. And now I guess it's time to really make it relatable for you funk listening Sigma male grind setters. I'm going to once again replace mathematical jargon with Gen Z slang. There's two main kinds of derivative notation, prime form with, with the little, little thingy mabobby, and the other is fraction. So that you guys don't crash out in your next calculus class, I should probably teach you how these are applied. Let's say that you're the chill guy, and you want to take the derivative of two functions added or subtracted from each other. Well, in prime notation, we see that it is equal to the derivative of the first function added or subtracted by the derivative of the second. That's pretty lit. For fractions, we write the function on the top and the variable at the bottom. Sigma. Now let's cover the constant property. What this means is that you can take out a constant, leave it there to the fiend by itself, and solve for the derivative of the remaining expression. And finally, redistribute the constant. Speaking of constants, this nonchalant redhead actually can't survive derivatives, i.e. the derivative of any constant, c, is zero. Because we want to escape the matrix and reach financial freedom at 20 years old, we don't have time to use the first principles method here to solve for the derivative at any point. Instead, we use the power rule, where the derivative of a term to x to the power of n is equal to nx to the power of n minus 1. The first thing you gotta know is that the derivative of two functions multiplied is not the same as the derivative of one function multiplied by the derivative of the other. We are not the same. Now, this is also the case for division. So the product rule is some crazy type shift that tells us that if two functions are differentiable, the derivative of the product of two functions is equal to the product of the first function derivative and then the second function added to the product of the second function derivative and the first function. The quotient rule is quite similar. However, it is of course involving fractions. <laughs> Of course it is. Of course we go shopping, shopping while, while eating a chicken, chicken bake. bake. Where gosh go, guys? The derivative of f over g equals the product rule, but it's minus, and that's divided by the square of function g. For the next section, I better do a quick skip lecture on how limits work. The limit of a function gives us the value that it evaluates towards as the substituted variable approaches a certain value. Let's say that your function was 1 over x, and your limit is x tending towards 0. Now, if you were chill guy, you'll probably recognize that x cannot be equal to 0, because that would render the equation undefined. What the sigma? So instead, the solution to the equation is what the function evaluates towards when x is infinitely close to 0. If we start Start plugging in something like uh, 0 0.0001, we notice that it is a very large, mm, like a yeah. Keep increasing the amount of zeros, the larger it gets. Doing the same with a very small negative decimal gives us a very large negative. Therefore, the limit x tending towards 0 for 1 over x is plus or minus infinity. Now that you know this, you should be able to thug out this next section. Lock in, my guy, lock in. We're about to derive one out of the six trigonometric functions ourselves, and then I'll give you the other ones because I'm lazy. First thing you gotta know is that when we deal with angles, we're working with radians represented by the symbol theta, not degrees. That's because these functions don't take mouse pay, only freak pay. Here's our two things we need in order to find the derivative of sine x. The limit for sine theta over theta, as theta approaches zero, is one, and the limit for cos theta minus one over theta is zero, as theta approach zero. Plus. Plus. What does that mean? I don't know. Anyway, so if you remember the first principles method, h is sort of small distance, not because it stands for huz. Any who cutties, we can write f as a function of sine instead. So you got that crap there, right? And so from here, because like the early example of 1 over x, the denominator cannot be equal to zero. We can't have h be zero, and that's exactly why we have the limit. I'm not throwing for content by substituting in this random ass formula, because this thing is straight up facts. So now that we have this, we can shift the negative sine x over to the left of the numerator. So we have sine x cos h minus sine x, and we can therefore factorize out the sine x to get sine x cos h minus 1, and plus the other crab, you know. From here, we can split up into two fractions that have this common denominator h. This thingy-majiggy now allows us to move the sine and cosine coefficients to the left of the limits. Hmm, chat, if you heard that clip earlier, you'd recognize these limits and fractions to be the first ones I covered in this section. I'm hoping that dementia hasn't set in, because we can actually substitute in 0 for the first one, and 1 for the second. Second. This leaves us with cos x, thus showing the derivative of sine x is cos x.
Well, the weather outside is rizzy, and the fire is so skibbity. But since I get to go, Ohio, Ohio, oh. Dude, I, for I forgot I was making this video. I was just uh, super into the festivities of the day right now. The reason why I'm teaching both the power rule and the first principles method, even when the latter looks as dry as the Minecraft movie, is because the power rule has its limitations. If we wanted to differentiate a to the power of x, we can't with the power rule, because that method deals with constants for exponents, as such, we have to use the first principles for terms that have variables for both the base and the exponent. So yeah, let's do that. Because x is the exponent, we replace f of x plus h minus f of x to a to the power of x plus h minus a to the power of x. Now that we have this fraction here, we can apply the fact that a to the power of x plus h is the same as a to the power of x times a to the power of h. And given this, we can factorize out the numerator into a to the power of x times by a to the power of h minus 1. Because a to the power of x is technically the coefficient of the fraction, we can pull it to the outside to get this. Now if we set x equal to 0 for this derivative, this derivative at 0, is equal to that limit fraction because a to the power of 0 is 1, so it's 1 times that, and therefore we can rewrite our derivative as f prime of x equals f prime of 0 times a to the power of x. Now this is quite anti-sigma, and if you're built like a sleeper agent like me, you'd immediately see that our solution has the derivative inside of the derivative. That is not aura. What is, however, is that we can write a as e to the power of the natural log of a, because the e and the natural log cancel. Now if we take the a to the power of h in the numerator and rewrite it as e to the power of h times the natural log of a, and we use the fact that this equals 1 because the coefficient of the variable h is 1 in the exponent. So yeah, using this for our limit fraction with the coefficient h in the exponent is the natural log of a, we can set the fraction equal to the natural log of a. And finally, holy crap guys, we just got a fat w and found that the derivative of a to the power of x is a to the power of x times the natural log of a. Let's get to the meat and potatoes right off the bat. The inverse of a function is when it is inverse. The inverse function is sort of the opposite operations to the actual function. Let me give you an example. Let's say y equals 3x plus 2. To find the inverse, we swap y for x, so x equals 3y plus 2, and then we solve for y, so y equals x minus 2 over 3. That is the inverse of 3x plus 2. Now if we remember trig, it involves something called soccer 2 spit on that tan. No, I, I don't remember that one. T stands for tangent, S stands for sine, and C stands for cosine. As an example of an inverse trig function, y equals sine to the power of negative 1, x, which by the way is arc sine x, the inverse of that function is sine y equals x. I mean, that's a bit counterintuitive if we're going off what I just said, but the formula for finding the derivative of an inverse function using it and the original function is this. So if we wanted to derive arc sine x, where g of x equals arc sine x and f of x equals sine x, we can rewrite the fraction as that. Because we worked out earlier that the derivative of f sine is cosine, we can substitute that in. Due to YouTube shorts depleting your attention span faster than I can say the word skibbity, you may not be able to remember, but literally less than 30 seconds ago, we defined sine to the power of negative 1 x as y. So this allows us to substitute that in to get cos y as the denominator. Do you know which gooner is clued in the most? Pythagoras, of course, with his Pythagorean identity, which tells us this. Notice how sine to the power of 2, y, is very similar to sine y, where that equals x. Well, we can actually just square the x to make that equal, and substitute that in for this part of the denominator. We're actually done. We're finished, because, you know what? We, we have the derivative right here. That's it. That's pretty cool. One of the fundamental rules of exponential differentiation is that the derivative of e to the power of x is e to the power of x. I know that sounds bad. No, no, all right. I know that sounds bad. But you actually need this if you want to derive hyperbolic functions. What are hyperbolic functions? I'm glad you asked. You didn't ask, did you? What am I even doing, bro? The two functions that are the foundations for the other four are sine hx defined by e to the power of x minus e to the power of negative x divided by 2 and cosine hx, which is uh, e to the power of x plus e to the power of negative x divided by 2. Okay, that's actually pretty simple. Now, if we wanted to differentiate sine hx, it's actually really easy. So easy, you might not even need the knee surgery tomorrow. I previously stated that e to the power of x is the derivative of e to the power of x, so that stays the same. And the formula for the derivative of e to the power of negative x is literally just negative e to the power of negative x. So in the end, we get e to the power of x minus e to the power of negative x divided by 2, which turns out to be the definition of whole sine hx. Get damn. Here are the uh, other derivatives. I'll just leave that on the screen for like a couple seconds. I'll do some beatboxing. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<clears throat> and here are all the definitions for, for the, the um, for the, uh, what are the oh no, sorry, hyperbolic functions. Sorry, I'll just do some Mongolian throat singing while you write that down. <coughs> yeah, I, I'm not a Mongolian throat singer, bro. Let's say that we had the function r of x equals the square root of 5x minus 8. If we were to use the first principles method, we'd find that the derivative is 5 over 2 times the square root of 5x minus 8. However, if we use the power rule, we'd have 5x minus 8 to the power of 1 half. And so we'd subtract 1 and multiply it by 1 half to get 1 divided by 2 times the square root of 5x minus 8. Which is pretty close to the actual answer, but not good enough. I'm not mad. No, I'm just disappointed. So to get the correct answer and not waste your precious time by doing first principles, which you could actually spend playing Roblox, we can use the chain rule. The expression square root of 5x minus 8 is actually made up of two functions. One that square roots it, which we can say is f of x equal to square root of x, and the other is the 5x minus 8, which we can label as g of x. Now, the chain rule only works if both functions are differentiable. And if they are, which they are in this case, then r prime of x equals f prime of g of x times g prime of x. So we we take the f prime of x, which would be the x to the power of one half part, and then we subtract one and multiply it by one half to get one half times x to the power of negative one half. And then because r prime, we are substituting in our function g, which is the 5x minus 8, we end up getting one divided by two times the square root of 5x minus 8. And finally multiply it by 5, because we are multiplying by the derivative of g, the derivative of 5x minus 8. So in the end, we have the exact same solution as the one we get for first principles. Holy crap, guys, did you see the news? Epic Games added Skibbity Toilet to Fortnite. I'm, I'm reinstalling right now. Oh, wait. So, oh, shoot. I'm supposed to be in this video. Find the derivative of y in terms of x of x, y equals 1. Now, the first thing you'd probably do is make y the subject. So, divide 1 by x, and you have y equals 1 over x. Then, apply the power rule. Currently, the 1 over x is the same as x to the power of negative 1. So, when you subtract 1 from the exponent and multiply it by negative 1, you end up with negative 1 over x squared. Yeah, okay. That's great. Not as great as the new Fortnite update, though. Sometimes, you actually can't do that. So instead you write it as x times some function of x equals 1. For convenience, let's write this function as y of x. And this is not the same as y times x, it's a function, you little skipper. Let's take the derivative of both sides. So we're left with the derivative of x times y of x equals 0. Now remember how I yabbered on about the product rule? So if we take that 1000 IQ play and insert that into our smooth brain, we can actually rewrite the derivative of x times y of x as 1 times y of x plus x times times y prime of x equals zero. Uh, cool, we've got y plus x times y prime equals zero. Rearrange that and you get a different equation to what we had with the power rule. What? No, dude. Hold your horses there, pal. You're not that guy. You're not that guy. Okay. We defined y in terms of x. y equals 1 over x. And if you substitute that into our new equation, we get y prime equals negative 1 over x over x. Which turns out to be the same as negative 1 over x squared. We are all good, bro. That's implicit differentiation, couple. Before I once again disappear from YouTube for weeks on end, I better point out the fact that this video only covers differential calculus, and only to an extent. I'm thinking if you guys like this a lot, I'd make a part 3 where I do the same for integration, and then end this calculus series with an advanced one, you know, partial differential equations, parametric shenanigans, that's a mathematical term I just came up with. But yeah, multivariable calculus is the big one, and I hope you guys found what I, the Sigmarist basement dweller, lectured useful. Actually, there's one way that you could learn all this high aura stuff before I come out of the pit of brain rot and cook up another banger. And that way is Brilliant, the sponsor of today's video. As of recording, I have a 207 day brilliant streak. Do you? Maybe, but that's not the point. The point is it is very good. Otherwise, I wouldn't be using it. Like I said earlier, my time could be better spent playing the new Fortnite update. And so if I wanted to maximize, hey, that's a algebra reference to points on a graph and you can learn what their functions cause. So if I wanted to maximize my learning and minimize the amount of time I have to stare at a boring lecture, just learn on Brilliant. It's six times more effective and you can do so from your phone, laptop, computer. Speaking of computers, there's courses of large language model, creative coding, applied Python, on, the list goes on. The idea is that you learn by doing, building up your problem solving skills in math, science, and computer science. The best part is that they go from foundational beginner level content all the way up to advanced learning in order for you to really solidify your knowledge. So if this sounds particularly Sigma, to try everything Brilliant has to offer for a full free 30 days, use my link brilliant.org slash findwire, you'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription.